Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, y'all come on in. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is our uh, Wednesday night worship uh, or Bible study. And uh, I am so excited because we are right in the midst of, of uh, to the climax of Pentecost. We're coming into Pentecost. Y'all know we believe in the feast and uh, we just left Passover. We're going to Pentecost. Penta means 50, also a Jubilee type of understanding, but we're moving into the Pentecostal um, uh, revelation. And we're gonna spend these next several weeks talking about the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost. We've had two, um, two teachings in this series, and um, we talked about the indwelling spirit and the capacity of your spirit. Tonight, we're going to talk about the power, and then Sunday, we're going to talk about the wealth that he brings. So let's get your Bibles. Let's go to the Word of God Let's uh, see what the word of God says about uh, this Holy Spirit. This spirit lives in you. Our foundation scripture is John 14, John 14. And we're going to look at, uh, I, I just like looking at verse 12. This is a Bible study. Come on, grab your Bibles. Let's go. Y'all know I love uh, reading the word of God and being a part of what God is doing with the word of God. So get ready. Let's go. Uh, God, God's going to do some amazing, amazing things. So let's let's go. Um, let me get this going and uh, we'll, we'll go. Y'all know I'm trying to get everything going straight. Amen. And it's, it's going straight. Glory to God by the grace of God. So here we go. John uh, 14, look, verse 12. Verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works shall he do because I go to my father. Say greater works. Say greater works. Say greater works. And whosoever shall say or ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified. He says, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do that, that the father may be glorified. Now we're looking at a technology right here. He says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified. So if your asking does not glorify the father, then you cannot uh, read the scripture. He says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son, that whatever God, whatever you ask for must glorify the father and elevate the son. And look what he says. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it with that concept, with that understanding. If you love me, keep my commandment. I will pray the father. He will give you another confidence. Let's read that in the Amplified. So our foundational scripture is John 14, 16. Let's read it in the Amplified. And I will ask the father. He will give you another comforter a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, an advocate, a strengthener, and a standby. We can really just stop right there and take the whole rest of the several weeks uh, talking about each attribute of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you another comforter, a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, advocate, strengthener, a standby that he will, he will remain with you forever. He will remain with you forever. Then the Bible says, even the spirit of truth, not only is he counselor, helper, intercessor, standby, advocate, paracletos, he is your comforter. He is your spirit of truth. Do, do you see all of the manifold manifestations that the Holy Spirit has? And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to live in you, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he receives him not, neither know him, but you know him for he what? He dwells in you. He what? All of this is in you. Now, the Holy Spirit is the most neglected teaching in the body of Christ. We have emotionalism, we have stimulation, we have feel good messages, but we don't have clarity on who is dwelling on the inside of us. And 90% of our prayers could be answered, 100% uh, of our prayers could be answered if we pray the right prayers. And if we look at who we are and the capacity of who we, uh, that who indwells in us, we, we wouldn't have to be going through a crisis. Now, y'all see this? If everybody who say 
they are baptized in the Holy Ghost would operate out of the attributes of the Holy Spirit, we would never have a crisis. We would never live in lack. We would never be in bondage. We would never, we, we, look what he says. He says, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Wow. This comforter, this counselor, this strengthener, this helper, this advocate, this parakletos, asuramanta, this spirit of truth. Wow. Look, look at verse 26. But the comforter, which is the what? Holy Ghost. The comforter is the Holy Ghost, the Ruach Hokadesh, the Ruach Hokadesh, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. So not only is strengthen a standby helper, deliverer, advocate, paracletos, spirit of truth, he's going to teach you all things. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we have all of this on the inside of us and we are still clueless to what God wants to do in the earth? Something is wrong, people of God. Something is wrong, sisters and brothers, that we have what we say we have, the Holy Spirit, and we are so far behind that the Bible says that the Ruach Kokodesh will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever I, had, I have said to you. Lord, have mercy. Help us. So do we really have the Holy Spirit or do we have a phantom spirit that that resembles what the Holy Spirit is and that we have become so religious that we've taken on a spirit that emanates and counterfeits the Holy Spirit and make a mockery of the kingdom of God, that this spirit that some of us carry uh, counterfeits what the Holy Spirit is doing and causes us to live in a place that will never glorify God. Hmm. If he says, this is dwelling in you. Let's go to Romans 8. Now I'm going to be a little redundant because I want those who haven't heard to catch up. We are talking about the indwelling. Tonight we're talking about the spirit of power. The spirit of power. So the, the whole series is the indwelling presence of God. And then tonight we're going to talk about the spirit of power. The spirit of power. Let's go to Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8. Let's look at verse, glory to God. Let's look at verse uh, 11, my favorite scripture. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he have raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that what? dwells in you. By whose spirit? His spirit that dwells in you. Remember, God is in Christ. Christ is in God. God is in Christ in you and Christ is in you emanating, come on, and manifesting the work. So you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the spirit that dwells on the inside of you. Colossians says that Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Now, the, let's look at, he says, the, the the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwell in you. The same spirit, the same spirit. So, so the, our discovery is to discover this being that lives on the inside of us. This is a being that lives. It's not just a wind, goosebumps, that's something to make me shout. It is the governing powers of the father himself that lives on the inside of you. And if we're going to make it through what we call this crisis, what we call this end of the era, this awakening, we're going to have to do it by the Holy Spirit. It's going to have to be by the one who created everything in the beginning. 
It is Ruach Kokodesh. It is pneumatology, the study of Holy Spirit. It's learning the language, living moment by moment. Come on, led by the Holy Spirit, allowing him to teach you and to remind you or bring all things to your remembrance, whatever the Father has said, even in your infancy state. Even before you even got here, you have a conversation with God. The Bible says in Ephesians, uh, he chose us before the foundations of the earth. That means you have pre-existence in God, with God. And come on, you emanate the presence, the power and the glory of God in the earth. Now let's go to Romans 15. Somebody is living in you. And remember, I told you, I hope it's the Holy Spirit. Somebody is living in you. There are a being, there is a being that's living in you. Now, look what he says. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you are bound in hope through the power, through the power, through the power, wait a minute, through the power of the Holy Ghost. He says, the God of hope fill you with all joy. You know, look, 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 look. One of the attributes and signs of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is joy. Joy. That you may be filled with all joy and peace in believing that may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now skip down to verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit. Wow. Through many signs and wonders, through the power of the Spirit. Hmm. Through the power of the Spirit. Now, let me let me take you to. Let's go to Luke four. Luke four fourteen. Glory to God. Y'all are right out there tonight. Come on, come on. This is teaching, strong teaching. But there's a power. There's a spirit of power on the inside of you. Now you, you can say, well, it's the Holy Ghost, but it's the spirit of power. He's called the spirit of power. So there's attributes to the Holy Spirit that he manifests in different dimensions. Remember, we talked about Sunday, the man at the Gadarenes who had a, a legion of, of demons. It was one unclean spirit, but manifest as 2000 demons on in the inside of one man. That means your spirit has the capacity to hold God. And remember, the earth can't contain him because the earth is his footstool, but the heavens can contain him, but yet he lived in the heart of man. So how big is your spirit? How big is your spirit? It has the capacity to hold God. And this man, come on, had an unclean spirit that had two to 6,000 spirits living on the inside of him. Wow. Luke 4, 14. Let's go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are y'all there? Let's look what he said. Luke 4, 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. How did Jesus operate? Because people think because Jesus was the son of God, that he had powers already when he got here. The Bible says that he came, he stripped himself. He stripped himself and came as a mere man, came as a mere man. And the Bible says Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. If you're going to operate in power, it's going to come by the spirit. Now, put this in your notes. Everything that happens, happens to you spiritually first. Nothing, y'all know, I would say the congregation always know dominion. Nothing just happened. It has to be legislated in the realm of the spirit. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. You have to go in the realm of the spirit and legislate in the spirit. 20 some years ago, I began to preach and the Lord says, Sharon, if you preach it in the spirit, preaching it in the natural will be easy. Well, I didn't know what he was saying by preaching it in the spirit. What was he saying? Rele lean on and rely on the spirit to preach through you, preach it in your heavenly language and the articulation of the natural will be easy. 
Now, some of, some of my counterparts and co-laborers are not going to agree with me, but everything we do, we must do it in the spirit first. That's why we pray, because we are legislating in the spirit. Now go to Acts, Acts, Acts 10, 38. Jesus came back. He returned in the what? In the power of the spirit, in the power of the spirit. Now let's let's read verse 18 because I need y'all need to see this. I know you know it, you can quote it, but you don't understand that there is a power grid on the inside of you, and it's a power spirit, a spirit of power. Now, y'all say it's the Holy Ghost, it's the spirit of power. There's distinctions to the Holy Ghost. He says, comforter, helper, uh, uh intercessor, uh, advocate. Come on, paracletos. This is how he manifests himself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me. The word anointing is moshkos. That means to smear on, to rub on the presence of God, to preach the gospel. He says, look, I have to have the spirit to preach. He's anointed me to preach. Wait a minute. This spirit that we house can anoint you to preach. Now I know I'm being elementary because you remember I told you I'm gonna act like you don't know nothing and we're just gonna walk through the scriptures. There is an anointing to preach. And you can't get it by listening to somebody else trying to emulate, trying to, um, you know, um, Take somebody else's notes, trying to get it. There's an impartation, a limited impartation of an anointing, but the fullness of the anointing is going to come from the Holy Ghost. The, the Lord says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? There's a reason why the spirit is upon you, not just to run in church, to have goosebumps, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me. So not only does he anoint, he will send. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery. He not only sent me to preach, he not only sent me to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, to bring deliverance, but he says the recovery is sight to bind, to set at liberty, those are bruised. Wow. This one Holy Ghost. Go to Acts 10, 38. This one Holy Ghost. Now, Jesus, remember growing up, we said if Jesus just was here, we, we would be all right. But Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. It is at your advantage. It's advantageous that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. Glory to God. It's the Holy Ghost that's, uh, that will anoint you. You get, you get an impartation from your man and woman of God, but the anointing comes by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the Bible says that when you are baptized now, remember, I am saying that we are carrying a being, but I don't know for real if it's the Holy Ghost. It is some kind of being, but I don't know which one it is. Come on, Acts 10, 38. Y'all know this is my favorite scripture. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, with the Holy Ghost and with power. There is a spirit of power that came upon Jesus and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. If we are going to overcome in this season, it's going to be by the resident power that's on the inside of you via the Holy Spirit. Wow. Did you know there is a power grid that lives on the inside of you. Zachariah said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. It's the spiritual dimension. It is the spiritual dimension. Let's go to first. Let's go to first Corinthians two. Are y'all all right? First Corinthians two. Let's go to verse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go to verse four. Let's go to verse five. 
No, let's no, 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 no. Let's go to verse three. I was. This is Paul uh, talking to the church at Corinth. He says, "I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration." We're going to have to demonstrate if we're going to live in this season. There must be a demonstration by the body of Christ. Come on. Now, now you can't, you can't blame your church. It is you and the Holy Spirit. You can't blame your men and women of God. It's you and the Holy Spirit. There are no pulpits for you to preach in. It is you and the Holy Spirit. Now, what kind of excuse are you going to give God? Jesus, he says, I've got a tag team, the Holy Ghost, and I've got to send him because if he don't come, if I don't leave, the comforter won't come. And the Bible says that Paul says, I came not in man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. I really believe that that's where we are. December 31st, the first time I ever had a crossover service uh, in the history of our ministry. And we had it this year. And the Lord gave me several things to prophesy. And we're going to put that DVD out soon. And one of the things I said is that we're going to see men and women of God who will be raised in power and authority. And we will see signs and wonders in an unprecedented way. We're going to see the glory and the power of God. And I really believe that there is a a remnant that's on here tonight, that there are those who will be reckless with the Holy Spirit, remove the limits and allow him to resurrect in you power grids that the spirit of power, ooh, the spirit of power will rest on you to do mighty things in the earth where we can come back as bold as lions and walk in the power and the authority. Look what he says, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Remember, I told you everything that God gives us, he gives us, it gives us to us in spirit form, in spirit form. Listen to this. First, First Timothy uh, 1 and 7 says, for God did not give us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Wow. Fear is a spirit. Love must be a spirit. Love is a spirit. Faith must be a spirit. Then he says, but love, spiritual dimension of love, power. Spirit of power, spirit of power, and the spirit behind a sound mind. The spirit. See, when it comes to God, we we can put all of the spirits on the demonic. He's got a spirit of divination. He has a spirit of fear. He has a spirit of perversion. He has a spirit of of addiction. He has a spirit of. But nobody said, "Oh, she's got the spirit of power on her." Or she's got a spirit of love or she's got a spirit of abundance or she has a spirit of wealth. Or we talk about the spirit of poverty, but but nobody switches it and and reverse what the spirit is. Wow. Or we can talk about the spirit of poverty. But when you start talking about the spirit of wealth, what, what do you mean the spirit of wealth? What do you? Well, if there's a spirit of poverty, there has to be a spirit of wealth. There has to be a spirit of riches or the spirit of infirmity. You, you could talk about the spirit of cancer, the spirit of, of infirmities or infirmity, the spirit that causes infirmities or weakness. But nobody wants to say, oh, she's got a spirit of healing on. Oh, it's quiet on here. Oh, she's got the spirit of a divorce. Well, why can't somebody have the spirit of matrimony? Well, she's she's a harlot or a whore. I know y'all gonna get me for that. Well, can't why we can't say we we have the spirit of sonship. Oh, she's she's got a contaminate. The Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. Nobody wants to talk about that, an excellent spirit. So when it comes to the church, we don't we don't want to say that it's a spirit. Because the spirit, man that live on soto. 
It, so we can say the demons, the demonic side has all of these spirits. And then God, you know, we just left to fight with these spirits that, that we don't, we just said, He's a count. You have a counselor on the inside of you. You have a standby. You have a strengthener. You have a teacher. You have the spirit of truth. You have power. Oh, let's let's go to let's go to first. Let's go to Colossians. Come on. Colossians one and twenty eight. I got to hurry up. Come on. One and twenty eight. One and twenty eight. Glory to God. Say God at work in me. Say God at work in me. God at work in me. Come on, say God at work in me. Y'all, y'all scared to say there are spirits that are in that are work in me. Come on, we got to be delivered from this religious thing. This thing, y'all can always cast out. Ain't nobody, you know, if you can cast the spirit out, can you welcome a spirit? How did if you casting a spirit out, how did it get in? Some say got in through generations. Some got in through sin. Some came, sent, came in through other ways. Oh. Well, if you can cast them out. And, and I'll pray that another comforter will come. He said, and I'll pray to the Father that another comforter will come. And I will pray. To the Father, and I will pray to the Father. Y'all, y'all scared, and I will pray to the Father. See, I, and I will pray to the Father. Let's go to verse twenty-eight. Let's go to verse twenty-eight. Oh yeah, I gotta go. I gotta get off here. Verse twenty-eight. Glory to God. Colossians 1 28, whom we preach, warning every man and one, teaching all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Jesus. Wherefore, I, I labor striving according to his work in, which work in me mightily, which work in me mightily. One translation says the energy that he stirs up in me so mightily. Another one says the mighty strength that Christ supplies, which work in me, his power, which mightily works in me, his power which so powerfully works in me, his power, his power. What is power? The ability to effectively um, act, the capacity to direct, to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. The, the, the power of the Holy Ghost is literally the power of God, the ability to act, to influence, is infinite, unlimited, and eternal. The Holy Spirit is the is the defining power in the earth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at Acts. Let's look at Acts. And then we're going to wrap it up. Let's look at Acts. There's a resident power on the inside of you. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the oil. All the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you and nothing by any means shall hurt you and nothing shall. There's an inside power. Come on. We're not worried about the government. We're not worried about the Corona. Come on. Come on. We are not living. We've got the spirit of power. We've got the spirit of faith working on the inside of us. We've got the spirit of a sound mind. Y'all don't like this. Everything that God gives us, he gives us in the spiritual dimensions first. It is spirit. Acts 10, Acts 6, Acts 6 and 8. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Acts 6 and 8. Holy, holy, holy. Come on. Come on. Lift your hands. Say spirit of power. 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 Come on. Yep. Yep. See God at work in you. you it, it, no, 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 no. Not the laying on hand. There is an impartation you can get with the laying on of hands, but there is a spiritual dimension of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. And he has the power you need. And I'm talking about all kinds of power. He has governmental power, legislative powers, executive powers, judicial powers. He has atomic power, nuclear powers. Come on. Y'all always talking about these powers, but he's going to show you to demonstrate through you. Acts 6, 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power. 
full of faith, spirit of faith, and we having the same spirit of faith. And we having the same spirit. You mean faith is a spirit? Yes, it is. There is a word of faith. There is a spirit of faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. But the Bible says that he has given every man a measure of the mention of the spirit whereby they may operate according to their purpose and destiny. And we having the same spirit of faith. And we having the same, see, see, Nobody wants to go into the spirit of God. Everybody wants to be these spiritual giants and be uh, those who will cast out demons and cast out. And we can call all these spirits, but nobody can call the spirits of God. Well, Nesbitt, no, no, Nesbitt, we've got to come out of this elementary mindset and begin to interact with the uh, with the host of heaven, interact with the beings and the angels that God has created uh, uh, and ordained for our dimension and for our generation. And we're going to have to employ, come on, what is coming on the earth? We're going to have to employ those things that are in the heavenly realms, the host of heaven and the angels and the creative beings that God has created and the superior wisdom and the superior knowledge and understanding and the technologies. You are not this little wimpy, weak Christian. If you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have a God that lives on the inside of you and you have to dominate in your sphere, in your sphere of influence. You've got a dominating governor on the inside of you. Stop backing up. Stop talking about how bad it is, how poor we are, how emaciated we are, how broke down we are. We have God himself that lives on the inside of us. God help me. I am weary of the body of Christ complaining. It was the very thing that kept the children of Israel out of the land of abundance. Because when they went through a hard time, they didn't know how to talk faith. They didn't have the language of the promise. They didn't have the spirit of the promise. They had the spirit of bondage. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says in Ephesians 3. Now, let's just go to Ephesians 1 and I'm going to wrap it up right here. And, and we might have to finish this because... I have not shown you adequately the dimension of the spirit of power. Y'all scared to even say that. The spirit of power. We need power, love, power. Well, how is it going to come? How is power going to come? Do you think it's just, it's just, just a little goose bump that comes on as a power? Now, the Bible says that Paul, from his body, handkerchiefs and cloth were put on the disease and the demoniac. And the Bible says that they were here. What happened? Spirit got in the cloth. The Bible says that God told Moses, take from you, take 70 men and put that spirit that's on you, put it on them. Oh, it's quiet. I wish I had a church tonight. I, I wish I I wish I had a body of believers that believe that we are going to be assisted, have divine assistance by the spirit realm. We cannot overthrow what we see in our natural. We can't overthrow this stuff, but there are spirits. There are angels. There are deployment of the angelic realm, the spiritual realm that God is about to allow uh, portals and realms to open where we tangibly see, acknowledge, feel and co-labor with these spirits. Where did I tell you to go? Last scripture. Where did I tell you to go? Y'all come on. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. I feel like running here. I feel like running. Look at, look, look, look at, look at, uh, look at verse 17, Ephesians 1, 17. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, I can't hardly read, may give you the spirit of wisdom. Oh my God. And the spirit of revelation. In the dimension of the spirit of knowledge. You don't believe me? Go back to Isaiah 11 and it tells you the manifold manifestations of the spirit of Holy Spirit. He says that he will give you the spirit of wisdom. <laughs> Ooh. That wisdom is a spirit. Wisdom is a spirit. Then revelation is a spirit. That the, look, he says he wants to give it to you, but what has to happen? The eyes of your understanding has to be enlightened because the natural mind can't understand this. That you may know the hope of his calling, what is the riches of glory and inheritance of saints. Verse 19 is where I want to be. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The exceeding greatness of his spirit of power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Woo. Look what he says. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality, power, dominion, and night, and every name that is named. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says he made us to sit together. Do y'all see this? The spirit of wisdom, spirit of faith, spirit of power, spirit of truth, spirit of victory. He's a spirit that is a strengthener. He's a, he's a comforter. He's a paracletos. He's an advocate. You know what paracletos means? Para means like legal, like he's our attorney. He adjudicates, legislates for us. When we need legal advice in the heavens and in the natural. My God, I'm through tonight. There is a dimension of the power of God. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us? With? There is a power. There is a spirit of power that God is about to uh, allow the body of Christ to have understanding, illumination, and enlightenment in. And we're going to carry this power. We're going to carry this dominant grace of power. And Jesus returned in the spirit and in power. He returned in the spirit dimension of power. Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, the first miracle he did, he did by the spirit of power that changed the water into wine. We are getting ready to see power displays, demonstration of powers, manifested power that is going to emanate out of the believer that's going to astound the world and stop telling everybody that you are weak, you are broke, you are struggling. I don't know what's going on. No, he'll bring all things to our remembrance. He's our GPS system. He's our governor. He's our guide and he's our keeper. And we'll never be lost. We'll never be left. We'll never live in poverty. We'll never be alone. We'll never live in fam famine. Why? The spirit of abundance live in us. The spirit of abundance. The spirit of prosperity is upon us. The spirit of wealth. The Bible says wealth and riches are in your house. Now, what does that mean? If they're not there tangibly, they must be there spiritually. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for even a greater dimension of illumination, enlightenment. Give us the capacity to hold revelation, to understand what we house, who lives on the inside of us, Ruach Kokodesh. Forgive us for uh, short-circuiting his power in us. Give us the grace, the might, and the understanding to walk in this power, this dimension, this love, and that we'll be able to allow him to do what he wants to do in us, in Jesus mighty name. Y'all give God praise for his word. My God. Hallelujah. The word of God. If you read the word, it'll bless you. I'm telling you, the word will bless you. If you read it, read it, the word, it'll bless you. Amen. I want to give those 
who have never had the opportunity to be give Jesus uh, or make Jesus Lord of your life. I want you to open your hearts now. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. You know, if all of those spirits can live in you and we had it demonic or the devil, then all of this that the Holy Spirit has for us wants to manifest through us. But we are kept in religious cycles. Today will be the best day of your life when you give your heart to the Lord. The door is open to a brand new life, to a brand new power grid. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. I believe Jesus died. He rose. He ascended on my behalf and seated now. Thank you for the power of his blood to redeem me. I ask you to fill me, baptize me with your spirit. Make us one again in Jesus name. Just like that, you're part of an amazing family. And God wants to do something amazing through you in Jesus mighty, mighty name. Now, there's a number. Uh, let me put the number back on the screen. one 579 5807 You can call the number on the screen. There are ministry representatives there waiting on you. Uh, to take your testimony and to induct you into this new family of God. God is amazing. Glory to God. Y'all clap your hands for all of those who gave their hearts to the Lord to rededicate themselves to the Lord. God is amazing. Now, uh, there, there are four ways that you can give. We want to give our offering four ways that you can give. God is wonderful. Did you know that there's a spirit of prosperity and that once you link yourself with that, God can do mighty things with you, through you. There are four primary ways. The Bible says, given and shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. Did you know that that, that lives in you, there is a spirit of generosity. There's a spirit of exponential uh, progress and prosperity. There's a spirit of wealth on the inside of you. And God wants to do something amazing in you. Remember, Job says, is, is, is my success from without? No, it's within. The Bible says, if you confess the word day and night, you'll make yourself prosperous and you will have good success. That means it doesn't come from the external. It comes from the internal. And your ability to heal Holy Spirit tonight is going to be paramount to your harvest. So there's four primary ways that you could give at Dominion. You can go to Gillify and do it at dominionworld.org. Um, um, Dominion World Outreach. You can call the office at 1-866-579-5807. You can do our online with our PayPal, dominionworld.org. And if you're savvy with Cash App, you can do dollar sign Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. Make sure you put in the comment section what you want that seed to go for, tithes, offering, first fruit, or any kind of seed to us uh, so you can make that happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is amazing. Thank you so much. I want you to lift your seed up, and especially my dominionaires. I want you to lift your seed up. I want you to lift it like you know that there is a spirit being living on the inside of you, directing you. And once you have obeyed what you have heard the Holy Ghost say, now the Holy Ghost is responsible for bringing a harvest to you in the name of Jesus. So, Lord God, we thank you for your spirit of might and your spirit of understanding that we can bring our offering and our tithes to you. We thank you that we are sowing them in fertile ground. And we thank you. You said that as a man's soul, he shall reap. And so we sow abundantly and we thank you now that we are reaping abundantly in Jesus' name. Say, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm a major success. I live long and stay strong in the earth in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So glad that y'all tuned in with us tonight. Now, look, if you have not ordered our book, uh, Scarlet Stream, Unveiling the Mystery, releasing the supernatural. You can do that. Amazon has it. You can also call the number on the screen and pick that up. Seven places Jesus shed his blood, seven dimensions 
and seven rams that you can enter in in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Look, y'all. Everything happens in the spirit first. Now, I know some of y'all going to use first the natural, then the spiritual. No, no. everything happens in the spirit and then it has a natural connotation. Remember in Second Kings, the servant couldn't see. He, he saw the enemy, but he didn't see the enforcing uh, army that had already surrounded them. He had to see in the spirit to know that he, the armies could not touch them. When you see in the spirit that this plague is over, that we're going to be triumphant in it. When you start seeing in the spirit, as long as you look in the natural, we're going to always have faulty eyesight. But when you look in the spirit, you're going to see the promise and the plan of God. Amen. Amen. One more thing I have to announce this Sunday, we're going to have our sack lunch grab and go. It's going to be our drive through fellowship. Um, man, we're going to we're going to we're going to feed our community and we are going to um, feed our church members. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have our big, big grill out. We're going to be grilling. We're going to be giving away food to our community. So we want you all to pray for us that souls will be saved in that short window that hearts will be touched. We are believing we're going to have uh, just an overwhelming uh, influx of people. So Sunday at 11 uh, o'clock, we're going to start our drive through fellowship, our grab and go. And um, we're going to be feeding the community in Jesus mighty, mighty name. So I want to say to all of our first timers, thank you so much for tuning in and um, being a part of our uh, um our Bible study tonight. And uh, if it's your first time, I want you, I want you to um, inbox us. Let us know if it's your first time. Let us know where you were coming from and um, tell us how you, uh, how the broadcast bless you or whatever. And if you want to become an e-member or a partner to us, you can call the number on the screen, 1-866-579-5807. And you can do that. A lot of people ask us and say, I don't have a church, but I want, I want to be a part of what uh, you are doing. You can do that as an e-member or e-partner. And um, you can call the number on the screen and they can, they can give you the information. 1-866-579-5807. Zero seven. All right. I love you with the love of the Lord. Don't forget uh, Sunday at 830. We'll be right back here. We'll be back in the sanctuary. Amen. Uh, with uh, some worship, live worship. It's going to be amazing. I want you to be 830 Sunday morning. Then Monday morning at 530. Uh, we're going to resume our prayer and we're going to make sure make sure you're on 530. Uh, Monday morning for our prayer. Amen. So at 11 on Sunday, we'll see your dominionaires and all of those in the community that will come uh, in the name of Jesus. So we love you with the love of the Lord. We thank you. We seal this with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, have a super duper night. Amen. Good night. Love you.